Back in 2013, Fire Emblem was in a pretty great place. Sales and interest in the series were at a high, a new game was on the way, and multiple characters were representing it in Super Smash Bros. It was a pretty great time to be a Fire Emblem fan, with all the interest from new fans coming up and the focus that Nintendo was putting into it. But from all these new projects came a rather interesting one in particular. Nintendo released a teaser trailer for some sort of Shin Megami Tensei and Fire Emblem crossover game. Nobody knew what it was going to be about, but several people were excited at the idea. Flash forward two years later at the announcement and we got... this. Regardless of whether you were a Shin Megami Tensei fan or a Fire Emblem fan, I think a majority of us had the same reaction. What? Rather than making a typical crossover game like Capcom vs. whatever or something like Project X Zone, Atlas instead decided to make their usual type of Shin Megami Tensei game with a clash between two different worlds slash dimensions that all slapped on with a Fire Emblem motif. The game wasn't going to be set in some fantasy medieval setting where you fought monsters, but instead was set in modern Tokyo, revolved around helping people in the entertainment industry, most notably Japanese idol culture. I'll go ahead and admit that I've never played Shin Megami Tensei, and I've only ever played the spin-off games of Persona 3 and 4, but even then I still thought it was kind of a weird premise. But still, I was interested to see how it was. So, this is Tokyo Mirage Sessions, hashtag Fire Emblem. Hashtag Fire Emblem? What am I making a Twitter post? Tokyo Mirage Sessions is a game for the Wii U and developed by Atlas, developers of other famous JRPGs like the Shin Megami Tensei series. Duh. Five years before the start of the game, one of the characters, Tsubasa Oribe, is attending a show by her sister, Aya, that's apparently being put on for a charity event for people with a rare skin condition that turns your whole body into one color. Suddenly in the middle of the show, the entire opera house of people disappear, including Aya, leaving Tsubasa the lone survivor. Flash forward five years later, and Tsubasa's going to a sort of American Idol tryout competition to become an idol singer, just like her missing sister. You know, with all this focus on Tsubasa, you'd think that she was the main character of the story. And you'd be right, but she's not the one you play as. Instead, you follow the footsteps of her friend and pillar of support, Itsuki, your typical blue-haired everyman character. Itsuki shows up at the idol competition just in time for the whole thing to go foobar, where Japanese meatloaf sicks a bunch of monsters on the crowd and kidnaps Tsubasa and the other girls. Itsuki naturally rushes in to save her, discovering a scary new dimension where he's hounded relentlessly by monsters until he can catch up to Tsubasa. He turns the tables on one of the monsters who, hey that's Krom, ends up joining him and helping Tsubasa. The two of them get new blue haired companions, sweet transformations, and kick off a plot to save Tokyo that's being attacked for its talent in the entertainment industry. What? Thematically, that's the basic gist of what Tokyo Mirage Sessions is all about. Apparently, when Atlas was making this game, they decided they wanted the main themes to revolve around idol culture and the entertainment industry in Japan. Story-wise, the game follows the cast trying to unravel these mysteries of these mysterious monsters slash ghosts, which are called mirages, and why they're sucking the creative energy out of humans. The main characters can utilize the mirages in combat, and thus are known as Mirage Masters. However, as a cover for their operations, they're all involved in the entertainment industry. If you have any kind of understanding of Fire Emblem, then you know that absolutely none of this sounds related to any of those games. And you'd be right. As said before, this is pretty much just a Shin Megami Tensei cake, but with some Fire Emblem sprinkles on top. The most stamped out example are the Mirage characters. All of them are Fire Emblem characters from Fire Emblem Awakening and from the original Fire Emblem game. For example, Itsuki's Mirage is Krom, the main character from Fire Emblem Awakening. And Toma, his best friend's Mirage, is Kane, the Red Cavalier from the original Fire Emblem. That being said, I do have to admit there's some gameplay nods to Fire Emblem that make me smile. Character stats are set up the same way they are on Fire Emblem, and every time they level up, it plays the little level up jingle that you hear in a Fire Emblem game. There's also more subtle nods to the series, like how in combat the weapon triangle exists to an extent. Enemies use axes that are weak to swords, and swords are weak to lances, and lances are weak to axes, yada yada yada. Beyond that though, the gameplay is pure Shin Megami Tensei. The world's set up so that there's this modern overworld that you can run around in and interact with characters, but then there's also dungeons where you crawl through to fight enemies and advance the plot. Combat is turn-based, but also mostly revolves around creating combos between characters. Your characters will learn skills that complement each other and let them follow up with attacks to create huge chains and deal a ton of damage. 
But this isn't one-sided, because the enemy can do the same thing right back at you. This creates an interesting strategic approach to combat. You want to take down the enemies first that will open up attacks for other enemies that'll combo you to death. Also, there will be singing. Remember, this is a game about idols. There's gonna be a lot of singing. Even in combat. Also, I don't really talk about this often, but I find the presentation of the interface in this game particularly interesting and well done. The game has all your typical JRPG elements on a menu screen, like spells, equipable items, and your party members, but Tokyo Mirage Sessions fits the idol theme of the game into literally everything. Your equipable items are your wardrobe, and your party members are referred to as artists. It's just the little things, you know? The game also makes use of the Wii U gamepad by having other characters texture through it. Sometimes it's about the main plot, or asking you to help them with a side quest, or sometimes it's just about random things in life. It's a nice touch, but I can't really show it to you, because it's on the gamepad. Sorry. Don't mind me, just texting my imaginary friends. That being said, it can also get a bit ridiculous at times. Your party members will text you even if they're literally standing with you in a dungeon. The most obtuse example for me was when we were barreling through a dungeon to save our kidnapped manager, and Kiria, one of the other party members, starts texting me, reminding me to meet her in Shibuya to help her with a side quest. Yeah, so I know we need to save Maiko's soul and whatever, but I really want that stuffed animal, so maybe you could get on that soon? So is Tokyo Mirage Sessions a good game? Yeah. Yeah, I honestly think it is. But should you get it if you're a Fire Emblem fan? That's kind of a tougher question. The real question you should be asking isn't if you like Fire Emblem, the question should be, how do you feel about J-pop? Yeah, there's a lot of singing in this game if I haven't made that clear already. You'll have to sit through about six or seven full music videos at least. That being said, the music is still pretty good, at least in my opinion. It's just Japanese. In fact, everything in this game is Japanese except the text. Nintendo didn't bother to hire English voice actors to dub the game. Although, what was translated is quite well done. The dialogue feels very real and natural most of the time. A plus, Alice. Honestly, it seems like Nintendo didn't expect this game to do well in the West in general due to the lukewarm reception the trailers got and the overall cultural differences. But it makes me curious as to why they'd want to release the game here in the first place. I actually went to several different GameStops in my local area and the clerks there didn't even know the game had been released. And when they checked the registry, they only had about two copies available, which had already been checked out. I ended up having to go digital, so now a significant portion of my Wii U's memory is dedicated to a J-pop game. The Japanese audio isn't a huge deal, but what sucks is that there's only subtitles for main conversations. Battle dialogue isn't dubbed or subbed, so there's several times where characters are bantering with each other, and it's completely wasted on me. Also, all the Fire Emblem characters use their Japanese names, but use their English versions in text. The most standout example is Kadia, who's named Shida in Japan. Nintendo apparently also censors several bits of content for the game, further playing into the stereotype that Nintendo games can't tackle mature content and have to be functional for the entire family. My stance on Nintendo censorship is the same as it always was. So long as it's not limiting my game experience, then I don't really care. But that being said, when most Shin Megami Tensei games are rated M for Mature and they often tackle pretty heavy topics, it's kind of annoying that the game might be potential limited just so they can get a T rating. Especially if the game already wasn't expected to do well. So is Tokyo Mirage Sessions worth your time? Well, I mean, if you like JRPGs, then yeah, I'd honestly say it's a good game to look into. Just, if you're a Fire Emblem fan, don't go in with too much high hopes about how it is connected to the series, because that's really not where your vote should be going. The premise is kind of weird and the themes might be off-putting to a Western audience, but Tokyo Mirage Sessions is a very solid JRPG and I'm having a pretty great time with it. The characters are entertaining and likable, the story's pretty good, and the actual gameplay is well done to the point of being challenging, but not too tedious or overbearing. The game doesn't feel like the cash grab that people thought it was with all the J-pop stuff, but instead unfolds in the true Atlas fashion and deconstructing these themes by showing how stressful and soul-crushing it can be when trying to get into the entertainment industry. I will admit that I'm not entirely sold on the whole Fire Emblem parts to it though. I like the nods the series this game has, and I appreciate that all the characters retain their core personalities despite being in a new setting. And I also really like the designs of the Mirage characters themselves. Krom and Virion in particular look really badass. But the thing is, is you could have done this with literally any other series, kept the story the same, and it would have been the same game. The Fire Emblem characters are a cool touch, but they just don't feel integral to the design of the game. I feel like it could have gotten the same experience if you replaced all the characters with different versions of Samuel L. Jackson. But with that said, I did find the Fire Emblem themes to be still kind of fun. I mean, I always liked seeing who was going to show up as a mirage, as either a boss or an enemy, or maybe even an ally. 
And honestly, it's a really good JRPG, so if you like that kind of game, I would definitely recommend it. If you can't get into it because of cultural differences or you just don't really like J-pop, I can understand. But don't let those be your reasons why you consider a game to be objectively bad, because it's not. to racism people say I don't care if they're black white purple or green oh hold on now purple or green you gotta draw the line somewhere <laughs> to hell with purple people <laughs> unless they're suffocating <laughs> then help them <laughs> <laughs>